Greetings everyone, there is not much evidence of women's participation in the American Revolution and to feel the absence of women's participation in the American revolutionary process, some legends proliferated and were accepted as highlighting the heroic character of women in the American Revolutionary era. Some examples of these legends are that of Molly Pitcher and the legend of Cindy Lorington. However, there is concrete evidence of the participation of some women in the American War of Independence. One of these women is Deborah Samson. The case of Samson is very different from that of Molly Pitcher and Cindy Lorington because there is written military record of her participation in the army. There are also accounts of her lectures and there is a medical record that demonstrates the veracity of her existence and her story. In the case of Molly Pitcher and Cindy Lorington, historians had found no concrete evidence to lead them to confirm the identity of this woman and their heroic deeds during the Revolutionary War. To go further, um, in the case of Molly Pitcher, it is believed that more women were nicknamed that way, making it even more difficult to trace Molly Pitcher's true identity. The story of Deborah Samson caught my attention immediately for two main reasons. First, Deborah Samson's participation in the Continental Army, pretending to be a male soldier. soldier. And the second reason is that Deborah Samson's evident desire to actively participate in the American Revolutionary War. But who was Deborah Samson? Uh, Monica Garvin published a short biography of Deborah Samson in which she says Deborah was born in Massachusetts on December 17 of 1760. Samson came from a poor family and for that reason she had to work as an indentured servant for the Thomas family when she was 10 years old. With the Thomas family, Deborah learned um, to do multiple of tasks which required great physical effort which helped her develop stamina and strength. The Thomas family allowed Deborah to attend to school as long as she finished her chores. For that reason, Deborah learned to read and to write. In the year um, 1770, the tensions between Britain and the colonies intensified which led the colonies to make the decision to fight for their independence. After the battles of Concord and Lexington, Deborah Samson, at only 15 years old, felt an overwhelming desire to help the revolutionary cause. Initially, Deborah helped feed the soldiers of the Continental Army, but soon became convinced that in order to contribute to the Revolutionary War, she had to dress as a man. Her first attempt to enter the army dressed as a man was a failure, as she was discovered and subsequently um, expelled from the church for dressing as a man. In 1782, Deborah attempted to enter the army again with success, uh, enlisting under the name of Robert Shirtleff, uh, Judy Hiltner in her article, She Bled in Secret, Deborah Samson, her name, man, and the female review, talks about how efficient Deborah was in the army. However, in the battle, two bullets entered the area of the groin from which she breathed bravely and in a cold manner gets rid of one of the bullets. The second bullet was lodged in her body and still Deborah continued her work in the Continental, Continental Army. It was not until she got a fever and collapsed that her true identity was discovered. Dr. Barnabas Beeney was the one who discovered the true identity of the soldier. Dr. Beeney reported the discovery to his superiors. However, she was dis discreetly, honorably discharged. Deborah Simpson became famous as memoirs of her exploits were published in Herman Mann's book, The Female Review. In addition to the publication of Herman Mann book, Deborah Samson toured New England speaking publicly at well attended events about her adventures as a soldier. Woman contributed significantly to the War of Independence, yet very little was written about the woman who helped the Continental Army um, to win the war.